For the past three years, a teacher that we know and love, Dr. McBride, has had a closet connected to his room. He claims to use it for storage, but it seems there's something more. Students and teachers alike have often wondered what they would find if they entered this closet. Joseph DeCosimo, who teaches in the room right next to Doc's, says he has been curious about this closet since he got here. He was kind enough to let us interview him. Hi, I'm Jordan Berger here with uh, Joseph DeCosimo. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing pretty well. Pretty well. Okay. So, uh, how long have you been teaching here? I've been here, uh, well, this is my second year. Second year. Your second year here, and um, you and Dr. McBride share a closet that we're actually doing an investigative report on. Yeah. Have you noticed anything strange or uh, weird about his closet? Well, I've, I've kind of, honestly, I've been thinking about it a lot lately. Really? How, yeah. how many times have you actually been in it? Or Well, I've, honestly, I've only been in once for an extended period of time, and then the rest of my trips have been like if I locked myself out and had to go in. Okay. But just a quick in and out trip. Okay, so explain that first time, the extended period you were in there. Well, it was in August, about uh, a year and a half ago, whenever, when I started here. And it was... Like one of those August scorchers, that's oh, yeah. what I call them. That's what we always that's called them at home. Um, and I had set up my classroom and I was really hot, you know, and had the AC yeah, on really in hot. here. And I walked in there with Doc. He mm -hmm. called me in there because yeah. he wanted to show me the this closet. And it was, I think he already kind of had it marked off as his territory, but as a gesture, kind of a friendly gesture. Oh, yeah. But when I walked in, have you ever walked like on a hike in the summer and you get to an area as you're sort of dropping down to where a creek is mm -hmm. and all of a sudden the air feels uh cooler and you can feel this strange kind of almost fairy world like, fairy world. Um, like woodland fairies humidity uh it's a it's a fresher air kind of thing this makes you happier right it does i it could i guess it could make you happy on a hot day and that day it did make me happy but it it really piqued my curiosity so the other thing happened uh right during exams this December and what happened then was um, I, I had stayed late to do some grading it was pr probably 1030 when I mm -hmm. left and earlier in the night earlier that evening I was you know reading through some essays and I heard the distinct sound of uh, peanut shells crunching which that's not uncommon I hear that um, quite a bit yeah frequently you know most afternoons I think he naps in there some I'm not mm -hmm. sure um, but then I heard high-pitched voices it sounded like mixed with low rumbling um, bassy voices and uh, anyway I left I, I didn't think too much of it um, so I came back the next morning though and you're still there well he came out of his room i get here at about 7 30 usually and he was as i got here he was leaving his closet so there's been many times where he's he's been in there for an extended amount of time I, over I, I think so sometimes i know that he you know i know he's painting i know that he's painting his his uh, war games no, figures yours. yeah because i see his head hunched over and he's got i, I think it's a light <laughs> on right yeah. there and, and i can see that he's working on that but then when he steps beyond uh, basically what you can see from this window, that's when, that's when... It seems it disappears for He'll hours be upon gone for time. for hours, yeah. All right, well, thank you oh, for this interview, and we're going to try to get to the bottom of this. Let me know what you find out. I will. Dr. McBride refuses to answer any questions about his closet, and he is very secretive about when he enters. Once in there, he has been known to stay for many hours and sometimes even overnight. After some persuasion, he too agreed to have an interview with us. Hello, I'm Jordan Burr and this is Patrick McCullough and we're here with John McBride, Dr. McBride, and uh, we're going to ask him a few questions about his closet. So, uh, how many... Yeah, your closet. You didn't say that. My closet? Yeah. Why are you asking about my closet? I just... We just wonder about it. We didn't have a report in your closet, actually. Oh. <laughs> what do you want to know? So you've been in this in this room for four years, correct? That's right. And uh, you've had this closet ever since you've been in here? That's right. 
And originally you said that Dr. McCullough wanted to use it as... It was designed as a hallway, kind of a dead-end hallway with lockers, and I persuaded um, whoever was in charge of the drawings that uh, we needed an office across the hall and that I needed space for my stuff. For your stuff, and that's what you keep in your closet. My stuff. Is there anything else in your closet that we need to know about? It's my stuff. Okay. Would, Would you mind if we took a look around? or? Yes. You wouldn't mind? Yes, I would mind. Why, why is that? It's my stuff. Okay, but it's, one, it's for the news. I mean, for the news. You want the world to see my stuff? I, I admit, yeah. No. Oh, okay. Well, uh, th- thank you for this. Is this interview over? Y- yeah, yes. Good. Um, no way. Bye, bye. Dr. McBride left later that afternoon. So we decided to sneak in to get a look for ourselves. All right, I think I think Dr. McBride's gone for the day, so we're just gonna we try and get in his room and see if uh, orders in the Navy, and we'll try to. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I'm gonna try it because the coast is clear. We're in. Come on, Derek. We uh, we brought Derek along because everyone knows that the black guy's the first to die if anything bad happens, so we gotta have him. Okay. This is actually the uh, entrance to Dr. McBride's closet, and I'll try to open the door, and hopefully it's gonna be all right. It's unlocked. Derek, go ahead. What? You're Steven C. Turn light. Is it safe? It's fine. All right. Come on. Well, it seems seems pretty normal. Dude, look at all these miniatures. He paints them all like with. Oh, dude, check detail. this out. Look what? at this. Come over here. Don't step on it. Oh god. Check Pay this out. Shells everywhere. Hmm. Hey guys, what, dude? Dude, peanut dude. shells. Seriously. That's just a Dr. I mean, Mr. Cosmo's uh, room, dude. No, I'm serious. Peanuts are much more interesting. Oh, dude! No, check it out. There, it's Mr. Cosmo's. Uh, yeah, he plays the fiddle. Big deal. And they're still whoa, fresh. Whoa. Holy! What, Derek? What Come is on. it? Derek, seriously. What is it? What? Come check this out. There's, that's just in the room. What, what's the room? What's the... What? This is room. What? Whoa. Whoa. Oh, oh my gosh. You know what I mean? Oh. Oh. Look at this. Oh, oh my goodness. This, this is amazing. It's true. It's true, man. Look at this. God! Oh, 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 What's in there? What the heck? What? The door? We were just right. What will be? It was in this space. We were just in there. It's blocked. What? It looks the. It's so ahead. weird. It's just a clock. You're right. Yeah, I'm fine. Well, hopefully everyone saw what we saw. What really was Dr. Mervais' closet? Some magical world. That leaves us. Questioning. Well, obviously that's all we can do today, but we will continue to investigate this. Back to us. That's all we have for tonight. But be sure to join us next week as we take a look at roundabouts. Roundabouts. See ya. Wow.